Hey there, Gavin Gear here from UltimateReloader.com and I'm very excited to kick off a series that's going to cover Hornady's new rifle bullet feed system. We're going to talk about the 22 caliber version and the 30 caliber version. And I realized when I went to go start this series that I needed a bunch of brass. So what I'm going to go through in this video is some interesting, different kind of out, thinking outside the box techniques for brass preparation. What we're going to be looking at is the military version of 308 Winchester, 762 by 51 millimeter, and um, this is what we want. We want to have um, a whole bunch of brass that we can throw into the case feeder and go ahead and load for AR-10 platform. That's what I'm going to shoot at least. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to start with uh, once fired brass that I got a really good deal on some bulk um, uh, brass for my friend for and we're going to run it through uh, the Hornady lock and load AP basically to decap and prime, deprime, and then uh, we're going to go and we're going to use machine shop equipment. We're going to use a milling machine for trimming and we're going to use a metal lathe for the rest uh, of the brass prep. So hang on and I'm going to show you one step at a time uh, some different techniques for doing brass prep. So prior to sizing and depriming, what we're going to do is we're going to roll out some of this military brass. I'm going to use uh, Dillon DCL, the Dillon case lubricant. Uh, normally I use imperial case sizing wax when I'm sizing rifle brass, but in this particular case I'm going to spray some of this on because it's a lot faster and we're going to go through a whole bunch of brass and it's a little bit tedious to, to uh, go through and wax up each case individually. We're going to be a bit generous because I'm going to be tumbling this off after the initial brass prep before loading. Okay, so we've got a bunch of that on there. I'm going to dump that into the uh, case feeder and we're going to do some sizing and depriming. All right, so our case feeder is full, drop tube is full. One thing I like to do when I start up a session of depriming and sizing, the sizing specifically, is make sure that there's plenty of lube on the first case so that you get a good coating on the inside uh, of the uh, sizing die. Now, little trick, synthetic motor oil actually works really good as a case lubricant. So I poured a little bit of that into uh, the cap here, dip just the end of my finger on there, just I need a little bit, coat the, uh, the first case that I put through, I just performed this a minute ago, and then we're going to just go ahead and size and deprime each one. With the case feeder, this is going to make things go a lot quicker. Alright, so this is my milling machine, which I'm going to use to do some case trimming here. And I've got a very simple setup going here. What I've done is I've taken the case trimming cutter head off of my Hornady Case Prep Center with the appropriate 30 caliber pilot, uh, so that will center nicely. And then I've just got a single stage or turret uh, shell holder here in the vise. And with some careful centering, what I'm able to do is just insert a case and then uh, run it down against the depth stop to trim to exactly uh, the right case length. Now, I've got the machine set to a fairly high spindle speed because I've noted that you actually have to hang on to the case a little looser uh, when it's going faster. If your spindle speed is lower, it'll grab more and it'll want to twist the case. So let's get this thing running and show you what that looks like. All right, so we're done trimming some of the cases. We've now moved over to the metal lathe. This is a nice uh, 1955 Logan uh, 11 by 36. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be using this lathe, which is equipped with a collet system. Very nice uh, for this kind of thing uh, to do the rest of the case prep, the machine um, oriented case prep, which is gonna be first to remount the primer pockets 
and then we're going to chamfer the inside and the outside of the mounts of these cases. So I'm going to start this up and basically all I need to do is make sure I've got my cutter installed in the collet and then I'm just going to hold it and then do a nice ream on these primer pockets. Goes nice and quick. And since we've got a horizontal axis here, all the chips are gonna fall out uh, nicely to the side. And we can choose the spindle speed that we want, which can help to uh, speed things up quite a bit. All right, so we're uh, done with the primer pocket reaming. And what we can do is just really quickly change out this collet. And what would be really nice would be if I had inserts that were threaded so that these could screw right in. And I could use the same collet basically for all of them. Okay, so now what we can do is fire up the lathe again and we're gonna chamfer the inside of the case mounts. Do a slight spin so that we get a uniform inside chamfer. All right, so I've swapped out collets. Now I've got the outside chamfer tool set here for our brass prep. And this is gonna be the last phase before we tumble off the loop. So again, just like the inside, I'm gonna rotate these slightly. Make sure I get a uniform chamfer. The important thing here is to make sure we get all of the flare from the case trimming off. So it's helpful to take a look at each one and make sure there's a uniform band all the way around. A ridge line could cause a semi-auto rifle to jam. Won't eject. Not what you want. So there you have it, we've prepped up a bunch of cases and we've used some unconventional equipment. Usually you'd use a hand crank trimmer, manual tools if you either need precision or on a low budget. Um, I've also shown the Hornady Case Prep Center which is a great uh, machine for running through brass prep but when you really have a lot of quantity, I like to use my milling machine and my metal lathe because it gives me a little bit more speed and it's just a little bit easier for me to work with. Plus it's an excuse to use some of this machine shop equipment. So stay tuned, because next we're gonna be doing some 762 by 51, basically 308 Winchester loading with the new Hornady bullet feed system. Stay tuned, we'll see you all later.